Take your Bibles and turn with me to Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah, he was one of the minor prophets. Zephaniah chapter 3, and we're going to be reading verse 17. I'm just going to be reading one verse for you today. We can all stand and read it together. So Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. Let's begin. The Bible says, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love, he will joy over thee with singing. Praise God. The Lord God in the midst of us is mighty. Can you tell your neighbor that the Lord God in the midst of you is mighty? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm just, just going to give you a little background of this passage. In verse 1, it was saying that woe to her that is filthy because it, Israel had sinned against God and he was um, this prophet Zephaniah he was saying woe to her that is filthy and polluted the oppressing city she obeyed not the voice of God she received not correction she trusted not in the Lord she drew not near to her God her princes are within her are roaring lions her judges and the and evening, her judges are evening wolves. In verse 4 it says, Her prophets are lights and treacherous, traitors, meaning traitors, disloyal, unreliable persons, and her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. All these things that the prophet was saying, that Israel had sinned, Israel had turned their backs against God. And Israel was God's children. We know fully well that God, God's people were the children of Israel. But these people had turned their backs from God. They had sinned. And we know that there is a consequence or there is a penalty for sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. And we know that we are serving a God of justice. So when we sin... We know that he will judge us. And this is what God did. He said, I will cut off their nations. Their towers are desolate. I made their streets waste. None pass it by. Their cities are destroyed. So that there is no man. That there is no inhabitant. Righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is always a reproach to his people. So every time Israel had sin, God caused all kind of things to happen to them. Their enemies dis, uh, came and invaded their countries. Also, they had all kind of plagues that came against them. So we find that there's a consequence. There's consequences of sin. Hallelujah. But we're thankful in verse 9, it says, because after judgment comes restoration. He said, he will purify the lips of the people and that they may call upon thy name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Verse 11 it says, He will take out from them those who are haughty and proud. Pride must go. In verse 13, 12 and 13 it says, He will leave a remnant of Israel who will not do iniquity nor speak lies neither shall deceit be in their mouth for they shall lie down and none shall make thee afraid. So here we find now that after God punished them, God will also restore them. Hallelujah. And that's why the Bible says, call upon me and I will answer. And show you great and mighty things which we do not know of. And also, the Bible also says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So irrespective of what sin we have done, we can always go back to God and say, Lord, we have sinned. Yes. That's the starting point. Yes. 
if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. And that's why David said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me, but restore unto me. Hallelujah. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. God wants to give us a restoration today. Hallelujah. He wants to restore the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the locust, the caterpillar has eaten up. Years that seem to have just gone down the drain. He is able to restore. Hallelujah. So although Israel had sinned, God had a plan. Hallelujah. God always has a plan. And God's plan was to restore Israel. Although they have sinned and sinned so many times, God's plan was to restore them back to him. Hallelujah. And in verse 14 he says, Shout and be glad, daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel, be glad. Rejoice with all thy heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Verse 15, the Lord hath taken away thy judgment. He has cast out thine enemy, the king of Israel. Even the Lord is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. Verse 16, it shall, it shall be said to Jerusalem, fear thou not. And Zion, let not thine hands, let not thy hands be slack. And in verse 17 it says, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord God in the midst of us is mighty. Hallelujah. He is the El Shaddai. The almighty God. When Abraham was 99 years old. The Lord Jehovah appeared to Abraham and said, I am the Almighty One. Hallelujah. The El Shaddai. Walk before me and be perfect. When I say that the Lord God is mighty, he is omnipotent, being all powerful. Hallelujah. There is nothing too hard for him. With God, all things are possible. And it was Jeremiah, in verse, uh, Jeremiah chap, uh, chapter 32, verse 27. He says, I am the God of all flesh. Right. And he asks an important question here. Is there anything? Can you think about anything that I cannot do? Is there anything too hard for God? No, no. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Right. With man, some things or most things might be impossible. But with God, all things. Hallelujah. All things are possible. You know, I'm really excited because many times we got some things. In, uh, we are, we are um, confronted with some things. And we just don't even know how to handle these situations. But we are serving a God. The Lord God in the midst of us. He is mighty. There is nothing he cannot do. God is in the midst of us. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And one of the biggest lies of the devil is to tell you that God is nowhere close to, to you. As a matter of fact, you can't even feel God. You can't see God. God is nowhere close to you. But I want to assure you today that God is in the midst of us. Yes. Hallelujah. And that's why the psalmist says, Be still and know that I am God. Amen. I will be exalted among the heathen. I'll be exalted in the earth. Because the Lord of hosts is with us. Yes. And the God of Jacob is our refuge. I want to tell you today that God is with you. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. God is in the midst of us. You know, this Christian life sometimes we are faced with all kind of challenges because that's why, what, what the psalmist says. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, hallelujah, he delivers them out of them all. And sometimes, as I said before, sometimes 
he feels that he's not with us. But he promises never to leave us nor forsake us. Matthew chapter 28 verse 20 says, And lo, for lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. If God was not in the midst of us, I want to tell you that we would not have been here. We wouldn't be here today. But the fact that we are here, God is with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is with us. Amen. If God was not with us, we would have been gone, would have gone long time. Amen. But the fact that we are still here, God is with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is on our side. Amen. If God be for us, who can be against us? We are on the winning side. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. You know, Job went through his tests and his problems and his sufferings. He lost his health. He's lost, he lost his wealth. He lost his family. Even his wife was saying, curse God and die. But the Bible says that he looked for God and he couldn't find him. He went forward, he couldn't find him. He went backward, he couldn't find him. He went where he normally appeared to be. And he couldn't find him. But I'm glad what Job said. He knows. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He knows exactly where I am. Hallelujah. And it's when he's tried me. Hallelujah. You see, you see many times. Many times we think that the test is to kill us. But the test is to purify us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, t the test is to shape us up. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. It's just like we are going through the process. Yes. You know, it's just like gold being refined. Yes. It has to go through some high temperatures yes. to be purified. Yes. And this is what God is doing uh, with us through the hard times, through the testings. Yes. When he has tried us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to come forth as pure gold. Hallelujah. I looked for him, I couldn't find him, but he knows the way that I take. Hallelujah. And when he has tried us, we are going to come forth like gold. We are going to come forth like gold. See, weeping may endure for a very long night. Some people might see us weeping today, but come tomorrow, there will be joy. Hallelujah. It's this assurance that we have as Christians that one of these days we will be smiling. We will be laughing because the Lord God in the midst of us is mighty. Hallelujah. Praise God. He will save. Hallelujah. And the prophet Zephaniah, like many prophets, he prophesied that God will restore his people. Yes. And it was Joseph. I know that the Christmas season is fastly approaching. It was Joseph. He was engaged to Mary to be married. But he just found out that Mary is pregnant. So he, he wondered in his mind. I must do something. Because the Bible said that. Joseph was a respectable man. So just to make a shameful um, because jo uh, Joseph saw his wife Mary who he engaged to become his wife was now pregnant and in his natural thinking Joseph wanted to put Mary away privately. And as soon as he considered this in his mind the angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph. Hallelujah. Amen. And he told Joseph. And he told Joseph in Matthew chapter 1 verse 23. It says. And she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Hallelujah. Oh, verse, uh, I'll go back one verse. It says, 
Fear not to take Mary thy wife because that which is conceived is of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It wasn't man's intervention. It was God's intervention. Hallelujah. So the angel had to come and tell Joseph. Joseph, fear not to take Mary because he wanted to put out Mary aside, um, put her privately. But the angel had to come and assure Joseph that this is not natural. It, she is conceived of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from the sins. Not only so, but like all the prophets before, it says, now all this that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet saying, behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is interpreted God is with us. Hallelujah. Emmanuel, God is with us. God is with us. So no more, you know, God, you know, just um, because before Jesus Christ came, God used to appear to man in different forms. But now he has a body uh, that in the form of Jesus. Now we can say that God is with us presently with us in physical so not only he's god the father or god in, in in the spirit but now he's god he's the son of god hallelujah jesus christ was the son of god so we find now that god is in the midst of us hallelujah and we all know that if god is for us who can be against us and also to, make, to note is this that although we do not have Jesus Christ present with us today, he has sent his Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Hallelujah. And that's why he told his disciples, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will send you the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, who will abide with you forever. Not only so, but he will teach you all things. And bring back to remembrance all the things that I said. So the Holy Ghost, he testifies of Jesus Christ. So although we do not have Jesus Christ with us today, we have the Holy Spirit. And we know that we serve in the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So God is still with us. Hallelujah. And... The Bible also says that Jesus Christ told his disciples that heaven rejoices over everyone that every everyone who sins and who, who, who asks for repentance, who sin and asks for repentance. Because when we just like the prodigal son, he went away and he wasted his substance with righteous living wasted everything he had he went out full and it was just a matter of time that he spent everything you know sometimes we think that we're doing good but you know we, we're doing the wrong thing but I'm glad at one point things got from bad to worse and the, this prodigal son ended up eating the leftover from the pigs that he, 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 he was looking after and Things got so bad that he reflected that my father had some servants and they're even living better life than me and I'm the son. Right. So he decided he's going to go back to his father. And he came to himself and he decided he was going back to his father. And while he was on his way, hallelujah, while he was on his way, his father was looking out for him. God is always looking out for us to come back to him. So when he came back home, on his way back home, his father saw him, his father ran to him, kissed him, and said to his, because he had this recitation in his mind, do not, I do not want to become a son anymore. Make me one of the servants. The father didn't even listen to his uh, recitation. He went, kissed him, and told the servant, bring out 
the best robe. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Put a ring on his finger. Right. Put shoes on his feet. Hallelujah. Right. And we're going to have a big celebration. Yes. So it is that when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives, there is a big celebration in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord God in the midst of us is mighty. Hallelujah. There's nothing that our God can do. If it's provision, he can provide. Hallelujah. Because he is Jehovah Jireh. If it's protection we need, he can protect us. If we need anything we need at all, God is able to do it. The Lord God in the midst of us is mighty. And it was David who asked, who is this king of glory? The Lord God Almighty. The Lord mighty in battle. And he went on again, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? He is the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. He is the Lord of hosts. You know, so when we are serving a God who is omnipotent, you know, we should have this confidence. We should have the, our, our, our faith should be sky high because we are serving a God who is omnipotent, Amen. who can do anything but fail. Hallelujah. And I'm glad that we are serving the true and living God because lots of people serving all kind of gods and they're serving them faithfully, but they cannot do anything for them. But we are serving a God who can do all things. Thank you, Lord. So, we first have to recognize that the Lord God is in the midst of us. Not only he is in the midst of us, but he, the one who is in the midst of us, he is mighty. Uh, Lord, have mercy upon us. Because sometimes we, we fail to recognize that God cannot can do anything and we worry we start you know start you know thinking about all kind of things but if we just put it into God's hands yes. he can do all things yes. and that's why he says for us to draw nigh to him and he will draw nigh to us yes. hallelujah the Lord God in the midst of us he is mighty thank God and when we are serving a God who is mighty, we do not have to worry. And that's why he says, to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. You know, sometimes we want things done and done very quickly. I know that we are living in the microwave area, um, era and... Um, you know, everything got to be fast. You know, mobile phones got to be faster. They got to be, you know, got, everything just got to be done very, very fast. But the Lord God in the midst of us is mighty. Amen. I want to tell you today that he may not come when you want him. But he's going to be on time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, the Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The Lord God in the midst of us is mighty. Hallelujah. So we do not have to worry. We do not have to really fret ourselves. Because once God is on the case, expect something to happen. Hallelujah. And the Bible is filled with lots and lots of testimonies of how God tremendously and miraculously transformed situations and time will not really permit me today to really go into all these examples but I just want to share with you a few examples and these are really familiar examples Daniel in the lion's den Daniel was thrown into the lion's den and not only so but in a den of hungry lions. And if God was not with Daniel, Daniel will, not even bones will be left. But I'm talking about the Lord God in the midst of us. Hallelujah. You see, when Daniel heard the, 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 
the men who plotted the, the scheme to throw him into the lion's den, he was not even perturbed or even really um, concerned about what they plotted. You know, they wanted to silence Daniel. They didn't want him to pray to his God. But Daniel kept praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Daniel kept on praying. And they decided to throw him in. But Daniel believed in his God. The people who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Daniel was not concerned whether they throw him in. Because he knew that the Lord God in the midst of us. He's mighty. Yes. Hallelujah. So when they throw in Daniel, these hungry lions, you know, they saw a greater lion. Hallelujah. The conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. The one who breaks every chain and gives us the victory again and again. These hungry lions became pillows for Daniel. Hallelujah. And Daniel was able to lie down on these Lions, hungry lions. Uh, well, if they were hungry, they had to bear the hunger for, uh, for a few more hours because these hungry lions could not eat Daniel because the Lord God in the midst of us is mighty. Hallelujah. And just to see that, just to really uh, compare that these lions were definitely hungry lions when they threw in those people who plotted against Daniel. Before they even touched the bottom, they were all consumed. Not even bone left. So that's just one example. The three Hebrew boys. The three Hebrew boys, they came from Canaan, from Judah. And King Nebuchadnezzar had these three Hebrew boys. And there was this decree that you have to bow down to this idol that King Nebuchadnezzar had built or erected and there was um, all kind of music playing and when they heard this music they had to bow down to this idol but the three Hebrew boys decided we are not going to bow to no false god because we are serving the true and living God. You see when you are serving the true and living God you do not need to go and Go to any alternative. You don't need no other alternative. Because the Lord God in the midst of us. He is mighty. So these people said that. These three Hebrew boys. They are not even regarding the decree. That the king had made. And consequently. They were thrown into the fiery furnace. As a matter of fact. The fiery furnace was heated up. Seven times hotter. But I'm glad that the Lord God in the midst of us, even in the fiery furnace that was heated up seven times hotter, that the Lord God in the midst of us yes. is mighty. Amen. He is a consuming fire. Yes. So when they threw in these he three Hebrew boys, not even the hair on the head was even singed. Yes. You know, it doesn't take much heat to singe you here. And as a matter of fact, those people who threw those three Hebrew boys, they were all killed before. But these three Hebrew boys, when they went in, they, were, they went in and they were walking around because there was a fourth man in the fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was this fourth man in the fire. And when King Nebuchadnezzar looked, he said, we threw in uh, three, but now I'm counting four. And he was able to say that the fourth man is like the son of God. Hallelujah. The Lord God in the midst of us. He is mighty. And I can go on and on and on. David himself. When he was faced against the Goliath. You know Goliath said. I asked for a man. But you, you, you selected a, a boy. Am I a dog that this boy comes with me with stones and sticks and all these things? But David knew in whom he believed. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And David, although he was a young boy, he knew that he was serving the true and living God. You know, and David had such testimony. David said, went to King Saul and said, there was this instance in which a bear came and to destroy my sheep. And I grabbed this beer and I slew this beer. In addition, there was another 
in um, time when a lion came to destroy my sheep and also I grabbed this lion and slew this lion and David had such confidence in his God if God allowed him to kill a bear if God allowed him to kill a lion of course who is this giant or this uncircumcised Philistine to come and defy the, 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 the people of God and David had this confidence in his God Hallelujah. It's this kind of faith we need in our God. That when we are confronted by some giants. And I'm talking about all sorts of giants. But no matter how big the giants. We are serving a God who is bigger. Hallelujah. Who is bigger than all of our problems. So when David faced this Goliath. David said, you come to me with spear. You come to me with shield. You come to me with all these ammunitions. But I come to you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it therein and they are safe. Hallelujah. And we all know the story very well. David slung, this, slung one stone. Well, he took off five stones. And they said that these stones represent the names of um, the, the letters of Jesus saying J-E-S-U-S and David took one, just one and slew the lion slew the sling the, slew the, 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 the stone into the forehead of this giant and the giant fell and David went up to him took his own sword and slew this Goliath so we are triumphant with God, hallelujah the Lord God in the midst of us is mighty. And there's, um, I'll give you one more. Paul and Silas, we were studying it today. Paul and Silas, they were imprisoned. And, well, they were imprisoned. They were first beaten and imprisoned. But the Bible said at midnight, hallelujah, at midnight, when you think that these, these, these two prisoners will be sleeping, will be more or less mourning or groaning because of the beatings they had, that the Bible says that these two apostles, they start, or disciples, say, um, or men of God, decided to sing uh, praises to God. They prayed and they sang praises to God. Hallelujah. And when they sang praises to God, I, I would want to believe that they sang so loudly that the jailers heard him. The, the, the prisoners, the other prisoners that were in, in there with them, they heard him speaking. Not only so, but God heard them as well. Hallelujah. And the Bible says suddenly, hallelujah, there came a great earthquake and shook the whole foundation shook the, the, the doors and everything they were open doors were open the back the handcuffs that the jailers they were in were, were, were also loose everything was loose this there was this great earthquake because we are serving a God who is mighty the Lord of hosts is with us and when these these gates were open. The Bible says that, and the and the, the jailer now recognized, or the prison officer now recognized that these prisoners that he was paid to keep watch over were all gone. He decided to kill himself, but before he could kill himself, the apostle Paul cried out to him and said, "Do thyself no harm. We are all here." And this jailer asked the apostle Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? And they were able to say to him, believe on the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved. Not only you will be saved, but your whole, whole your, all, all your household will be saved. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that eventually that his whole household came to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. His whole household was saved. What I'm telling you today is that the Lord God in the midst of us, he is mighty. Hallelujah. 
And he is mighty to save. Not only so, he is mighty to save. He is mighty to keep. Hallelujah. <coughs> Not only so, but he is mighty to, he is mighty to satisfy. Hallelujah. The Lord that we serve is mighty. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says, the, the verse says, He will save. Yes, he, he will rejoice over us rejoice. with joy. Amen. We know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Not only so, He will joy over thee with singing. Hallelujah. God wants to do something tremendous among us individually, collectively. We just have to rely totally upon God. We just have to depend totally upon him. And that's why the Bible says, in all our ways to acknowledge me. And he will direct our pathway. He will instruct us. He will lead us. You know, many times we wait until last resort to get in contact with God. But he wants us to have him as first resort. The first point of help. The Lord God in the midst of us. He is mighty. He's mighty to save. He's mighty to keep. He's mighty to satisfy. The Lord our God in the midst of us. He is mighty. And you know there's a passage of scripture in Romans chapter 8 verse 32. I'm going to get it for you. Romans chapter 8 verse 32. So he says. He that spared not his own son. But delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with himself. Only freely give us all things. He that spared not his own son. But delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all all things. You know, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. This gift of salvation, this is the biggest miracle that anyone could ever have. Jesus Christ came so that we can have life, not only so that we can have life more abundantly. This gift of salvation Caused Jesus Christ to die upon the cross. Not only for you, not only for me, but if he was only one, Jesus Christ himself still would have died. Because his intention is to restore us back to him. And the scripture says, he came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, them he gave the power to become the sons of God. To them glad I'm joint ears with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be a part of the family of God. So this gift of salvation. It costs Jesus everything. At one point Jesus Christ said. If it's possible. If, if, if there's another way. Let this cup pass away from me. And this was a flesh speaking because when you think about taking on this whole sin of the world. And this is what Jesus Christ, this was his ultimate purpose here on earth. He healed the sick and did all kind of things. But his ultimate purpose was to die for mankind. Because sin had separated us from God. And Jesus Christ came on this earth. And he said, if it's possible... Let this cup pass up, up, uh, from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. Hallelujah. And we are glad that Jesus Christ died for, every, for all of our sins. And he died once and for all. And today, we can enjoy this gift of salvation. Hallelujah. The Lord God in the midst of us, he is mighty. He will save us. He will rejoice over us with joy. Yes. Hallelujah. You, and a passage of scripture I mentioned there. Romans chapter 8 verse 32. If he has done that. There is nothing. Nothing. Everything else. Is, is less. Is lesser. Is more. 
you know, is, is if you want to call it, smaller. Because if Jesus Christ, if God did not spare his own son and allowed him to come and die for us all, everything else is, is just peanuts, if you want to call it that. The Lord God in the midst of us, he is mighty. And we know that the Bible says, cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. God, he cares for you. At times it might not seem so. At times it might not look so. At times it might not appear so. But the Lord, he cares for us. He cares for us. The Lord God in the midst of us is mighty. So irrespective of what we are confronted with, giants, financial problems, sicknesses, social problems, spiritual problems, God is in the midst of us. Hallelujah. God is in the midst of us. As a matter of fact, we cannot undertake these situations by ourselves. We need the intervention of the omnipotent one. You know, it was Isaiah who said, he said, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, given to us, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God. Hallelujah. He's the mighty God. Amen. The everlasting father, the prince of peace. The, you know, and he can do all things. Amen. All things. Amen. So we just have to put our trust in him. Amen. Totally rely on him. Amen. You know, and there are several examples that I can give to you today. To just build your faith. Knowing that once God is with you, you are on the winning side. Amen. You see, once we have God with us. We are invincible. Amen. You know, and so that we have to, so, so, you know, that even encourage us to really ensure that we have a close communication with our God. Yes. Because the Lord God in the midst of us, he is mighty. Yes. We want to cherish this relationship that we have with God. Yes. We want to build on this relationship. Yes. Our desire every day should be, Lord, draw me closer to you. Lord, I need to get closer to you. I want you to, you know, manifest your power, manifest your anointing, manifest your Holy Spirit in my life. I want to draw closer to you. You know, we cause the people, as I said before, that the people who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. You know, it was David who said, I was young and I became old, but yet I have never seen the righteous. Hallelujah. So irrespective of what stage you are in life, you could be the youngest, you could be the oldest, you could be middle-aged, no matter what stage of life you are in, you can have this assurance that the Lord God is with you. And not only with you, but the one who is with you, he is mighty. You can cast all your cares upon him. You can afford to depend upon him because he cares for you. Hallelujah. And this is the last thing I want to share with you. That once God is for us, who can be against us? Many times we are confronted by all kind of things. As a matter of fact, the devil himself will bring up all kind of things against us. But we are thankful that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against us in judgment shall be condemned. Because... The weapons of a warfare, hallelujah, are not carnal. They are mighty through God for the pulling down of every satanic stronghold. Hallelujah. We have the power. We have the victory in the name of Jesus. Because once we are serving the, the, the Jehovah God, the true and living God, we are on the winning side. We are victorious. And we can just be assured today that he will undertake for us. Whatever is wrong, he's able to make it right. Crooked, he's able to make it straight. Rough, he's able to make smooth. Mountains, he's able to pull down. Valleys, he's able to elevate. Hallelujah. That's the kind of God that we serve. Hallelujah. The Lord God in the midst of us, he's mighty. So this is my encouragement to you today, my brothers and sisters. Let's trust in our God. Hallelujah. 
Don't lose faith in God. Put your confidence in God. Because when man say no, God says yes. Hallelujah. When man say it's impossible, God say it is possible. Hallelujah. That's the kind of language we need to speak. With God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. That's the kind of God we serve. The Lord God in the midst of us. He is mighty. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us and thank you for listening to this timely and powerful message. You have heard the word and now we would like to extend this opportunity to you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you wish to do this, please just say this short prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Save me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you for answering my prayer and I thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that prayer, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. If you would like to contact us or even visit us, the information that you need will be on your screen in a few seconds. Until next time, goodbye. God richly bless you.